Hi, and uh, welcome to a new tutorial from DMX Rockets. Uh, my name is Magnus, uh, and I'm going to show you how you can use our XRockets Virtual Academy example for WebRTC uh, to set up a WebRTC based video conference um, on a public website. Uh, first of all, you need to navigate to github.com slash xsockets. Uh, then you need to go into the XVA repository and further on you need to locate WebRTC example. Uh, you can find it here, uh, it's called WebRTC Basic. And as we are going to deploy this on a modern machine that supports um, WebSockets um, or runs on a Windows 2012 environment uh, with WebSockets enabled, uh, we can use the Windows 8 examples. If you deploy to a non-Windows 2012 based platform, or if you prefer to use the any operating system example, you just use that example as well. Um, I will uh, just show you, this is the content of the example. Uh, I already downloaded this example to my machine, and this is the result. When I download the example, uh, you will get the, this content in your project. Uh, I mentioned that we are going to run this example on the Windows 2012 environment. That also means that we can use Ovin. So I have um, just a startup configuration uh, for Ovin here that says app builder use XSockets. That will fire up XSockets and the necessary endpoints as well as it will uh, capture or plug in these uh, real-time controllers of ours. Uh, this example contains the connection broker which is the signaling controller for our WebRTC related stuff. Uh, this is open source and you can find this code on uh, GitHub as well, uh, as well as in, in this example. So further on, uh, we have a uh, simple web page here that fetches uh, some information from um, all the JavaScript preferences from GitHub. Uh, it relies on xsockets.latest and our xsockets by latest um, uh, JavaScript code. And the major concept of xsockets and WebRTC is the thing called contexts. Uh, as you see here, I'm um, just looking for if there is no uh, value in the hash. Uh, let's create a new context. This is a GUID, uh, and if we have something in the in the the hash uh, let's use that as a, as a context a context can be compared to a room or, or a space where two or one or more people can connect in where I can isolate the room so yeah by just uh, changing the context you can have several of different uh, meeting rooms or, or or spaces where you can communicate uh, I also have a, in this example a reference to zero clipboard just to, to give the user a chance to copy uh, the current context of flipboard and share it using email or whatever uh, that feels, feels good. Um, uh, we can have a look down here as well. I'm using XSockets. Uh, I'm creating a new WebSocket. Uh, connect to the to the host name and port. In this case, it will be the public server name and port 80. I will specify the controller to use. In this case, the connection broker. Um, I will also pass the current context, my room, into the broker immediately and tell the, the server this is where I'm located right now. Um, we just grab an instance of the controller. Uh, I will pass the instance to my XSockets WebRTC um, API. And down below here, you can see that I hook up some events on local stream, which is an event that fires when my browser captures a local media stream. Uh, that can be my, my microphone or uh, webcam or both. And when we have a remote stream attached to my RTC peer connection, we of course want to add this video element to our page and uh, attach the media stream uh, from the remote peer. Um, when we lose a connection, someone drops out of the context or room, we will remove that element 
from uh, our document. Um, and if someone leaves the context, or uh, if, if I leave the context, uh, I will just display a context change in my console. Um, as well as when I connect to the broker, uh, the broker will fire a event called on context created. Uh, in this case, the context or room will be the uh, the grid that we pass into the, the connection. Uh, in this case, this will grid them. Uh, further on, uh, we will say when we are connected to the WebSocket, uh, let's open listen for the own open event on the controller, uh, because uh, we can be connected to one or more controllers, and we want to be ensured that we are connected. Uh, so um, <coughs> this part below is something that we used, just implemented in an example, to be able to get the, the turn configurations or stunt configurations from the server side. So this is nothing new that we can find in the in the in the GitHub example, uh, but it's quite the same. Uh, so uh, we invoke the method get IF server configurations, we get IF servers, and I want to listen to the for the response. When the server uh, created a IF server configuration for me, I want to parse, parse those, and I want to create a list of IF servers, because it can be one or more, and I want to add those to my WebRTC API. So <coughs> this is something that you can skip as well, uh, because there is a standard uh, configuration uh, uh, that will do fine for you. Further on, I will have some uh, GAM constraints, so get user media constraints. Uh, this tells me that I want to use UVGA and no sound, and then I will prompt the user for access the media uh, local media device using these constraints and when I got the media streams this event will fire if I fail to get the media streams this uh, event will fire so this is pretty much the thing uh, when I got uh, this event or accepts the, 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 the local stream uh, uh, the, the client to, to access my camera it will of course fire and add my local video to uh, be the stream to the, to the document. Um, so let's try this then. Um, we can just do publish on this one. Um, I'm now publishing to smarter8bit.net, uh, which is a hosting provider. So let's see what happens. It's now building and connecting, and we will push some, some code to the uh, remote web server. So it's done. Uh, let's have a look and look if it works. Um, just press my predefined um, bookmark. And uh, as you see here, it now accesses the smarter8.net environment and it will prompt me for camera access. And I will have a local media stream down here to the right. That is me. Uh, and there is no remote videos uh, connected now. I'm the only one connected to this um, to this context. Um, I can just use uh, this URL. I will copy it, and I will place the the windows this way, and I will navigate to the same web page without any parameters in the in the URL, and it will also prompt me for camera access. And here we see that um, I will pop up in both uh, windows. Uh, to s illustrate uh, more participants, we can just open yet another window and place it in the middle of the screen. So it will also prompt for access. Um, there you can see that we have three participants uh, within the same video conference. And if I shut this down, it will remove the remote video stream from the from the conference. So that is pretty much the thing. Um, it's quite easy to um, get started with the XSockets WebRTC. I um, hope that you find this interesting and um, please have a look at XSockets.net 
and our virtual academy for more uh, examples.